Guyana is ready for DNA testing and our Kuna alphabet booklet completed. It's Wednesday, June 26. These stories and more in today's news. First up, major news in the security sector. Guyana is now equipped to conduct human identification using DNA analysis following the commissioning of DNA identification equipment at the Guyana Forensic Science Laboratory today. The new equipment will offer testing in DNA direct comparison or matching evidence the criminal suspects, paternity and family mapping. Testing samples include semen, vaginal fluid, hair with root, blood and a touch DNA. Another equipment, the scanning electron microscope, was also introduced to Guyana for the first time. This will be used for gunshot residue testing. Together, the two pieces of equipment cost $97 million. Minister of Public Security Kamraj Ramjitan said of this period in Guyana's history, will be remarkable for its movement away from the simple methods into scientific detection. DNA testing is needed in Guyana because it serves as that investigative tool, as I just mentioned. And of course, they identify the perpetrator. It will also resolve a number of those cases that have since now been unresolved. And cases of those nature would include murder, rape and body parts found that have been kept. Director of the Guyana Forensic Lab Delon France said with such advancements, criminal and forensic investigation has moved up another level and will bring adjudication to more criminal cases with the passage of time. As the only forensic laboratory in Guyana, we will continue to advance our skills and technology to meet the growing and diverse need the growing needs of the diverse criminal enterprise, not only <coughs> nationally, but internationally as we collaborate on the various treaties and agreements to combat national and international crimes. Commissioned back in 2014, the Forensic Science Laboratory was fitted with four analytical departments, the toxicology documents, traced evidence and a chemistry, and non-analytical departments, however, it was until February 2017 that the testing of samples from law enforcement agencies commenced. Reporting for InfoHub, Alexis Rodney. To preserve the indigenous languages, the Ministry of Indigenous Peoples Affairs has completed the Arakuna alphabet book and will be printing 500 copies in time for Heritage Month 2019. The formulation of the Arikuna alphabet book forms part of the government's effort to revive indigenous languages across the country. Minister within the Ministry of Indigenous Peoples Affairs, Valerie Gurida Lo, explained that the book will be launched on September 10. It's finished yesterday, the Tushau brought it, and the, the, the um, illustrations look quite good. So that is finished, we will be printing 500 copies of that, uh, which we want to launch on Stephen Campbell's day, on September the 10th. The Arikuna alphabet has 22 letters and not 26, as is customary in the English alphabet. Both indigenous elders and children were involved in the formulation process. Let's say A. In the, um, A is for aguti. The children would draw the aguti, and the best, the best aguti. You know, they had a whole twenty-two drawings there, so we chose the best to put on in the in this book. The completion of the publication coincides with the United Nations International Year of Indigenous Languages, which focuses attention on the risk confronting indigenous languages across the globe. This year, the government allocated the sum of $36 million to promote Ghana's nine indigenous languages. Apart from the alphabet, a handbook of common indigenous phrases with English translation, a short story handbook, and a calendar with paintings depicting the indigenous culture will be published. Snigathorn, Foreign Info Hub. 
The National Drainage and Irrigation Authority has dispatched two of its excavators on a pontoon to clear the foreshore at number 43 village as efforts continue to improve drainage for farmers on the quarantine. The outfall of the canal was cleared by an independent contractor. To clear the outfall, two excavators were dispatched on a pontoon, which is taken out to the foreshore for the excavators to further clear the ends of the waterway. According to Chief Executive Officer of the NDIA, Frederick Flats, this was necessary. As we are aware, recently there was flooding at Yakasari Blackbush Polder. That's the same drain that is used to discharge water from the Yakasari area. Because the flooding was fairly prolonged, the NDIA was not satisfied with the rate at which water was um, being discharged from that area. And so to assist with the drainage, we dispatched that pontoon with two excavators to help improve the rate of drainage. Flats further explained that while the outfall channel is inland and cleared, regardless of how deep it may be, if the foreshore is not as deep as the outfall, the drainage efforts will be stymied. What actually happens is that even if the outfall channel is clear, you, you have a section of the foreshore which is high, and so it's very difficult for water to flow there. Your channel may be six feet deep, but in effect, only two feet are flowing into the ocean. Flats stressed that the excavator and pontoons are not just there to clear the channel, as that job was already contracted out. However, the machines are there to clear the foreshore. In a few days, this operation will be repeated in the number 51 and 52 outfall channels. The pontoon with the two machines is being moored inland at the end of the workday as a safety precaution to avoid them being lost at sea. The Department of Labor and the Ministry of Education have collaborated to empower 42 youths by giving them a second chance to write the Caribbean Secondary Education Certificate examination. 42 youths on Wednesday were in high spirits as they were informed that they will have the opportunity to rewrite the Caribbean Secondary Education Certificate examination, CSEC, in September. The initiative, which was birthed by the Central Recruitment and Manpower Agency, will for the second time give the participants a chance to a bright future. Assistant Chief Recruitment and Manpower Officer Yolanda Grant said the project will curb unemployment through a multifaceted approach. Our aim is to empower youth to acquire the skills, knowledge, and the drive to achieve by supporting them to develop the skills, knowledge, and vision needed to achieve employment and decent work so that they can become productive citizens. Grant further explained that Guyana is on the cuffs of transformation come 2020. Therefore, it is vital that youths be prepared to take advantage of every opportunity. Minister within the Ministry of Social Protection, Keith Scott, highlighted that there are a high percentage of youths who dropped out of school for various reasons. There are many people who have never ever had the opportunity to go to a secondary school. There are many people who dropped out of primary school as standard two, standard three, standard four, but that is not your future. Where you're at now is not your future. Where you want to be is what is going to be your future. What step you take to become what you want to be is what determines your success. For Info Hub, Ayanna George. Still to come, students of the Guyana School of Agriculture benefit from entrepreneurial seminar and civil aviation invests millions in improving air traffic control. These stories and more when we return. Are you ready to embark on a truly epic adventure to an undiscovered corner of South America, where some of the most spectacular natural attractions are unveiled within a beautifully diverse landscape? From the wetlands and savannas, to the ancient mountains, magnificent waterways, and lush and rich in rainforest, would provide a vast playground for some of the most exotic and breathtaking creatures on the planet, including many of the world's giant species. 
This untouched land of mystery and wonder serves up an exclusive experience for travelers. So are you ready for a new, awe-inspiring adventure? Welcome back to nature. Welcome to Guyana. Thanks for staying with us. Non-governmental organization Move On Guyana Incorporated has partnered with several agencies to engage students of the Guyana School of Agriculture on entrepreneurial opportunities available in the field. Presentations were made by Go Invest, Small Business Bureau, Guyana Lands and Surveys Commission, and IPED. Some of those in attendance shared their views. This seminar today was very informative and beneficial as to how we as youths go about getting our own business. As the minister said, no, nobody gets rich working for the government. So as young people, we need to come up with our own business ideas. One of the things I noted was the CEO from Go Invest. I like the fact that he mentioned that we should be focusing more on value-added products. And he talked about not only focusing on value-added products, but we should also focus on consistency and quality. Um, I like the fact that even though we as youths can be underestimated, we should somewhat be motivated. And I think that's why the whole organization like Guyana or MOVE was established today. Minister within the Ministry of Agriculture with responsibility for rural affairs remarked that agriculture is a profitable business and an important income earner for youths. She therefore urged the students to think seriously along this line of business. Today I urge you to think seriously about agriculture. Think about its diversities and the possibilities of becoming something big in what we now call agripreneurship. Agripreneurship and being a part of world change. It was noted that this particular exercise makes it easier for graduating GSA students to have more access to loans, lands, and other necessary startups for a successful business endeavor. From the Guyana School of Agriculture in Monrepo on the east coast of Demerara with videographer Akim Thomas, I am Delicia Haynes for InfoHub. The Guyana Civil Aviation Authority has made significant strides to enhance its operations as Guyana's air traffic continues to expand. For 2019, the aviation sector's regulatory body has invested $60 million in purchasing equipment that will serve as a boost to its operations. Director of Air Navigation Services, ANS, within the Ghana Civil Aviation Authority, GCAA, Rickford Samaru, explained the types of equipment that will be purchased and the benefits of these high-tech resources. According to the ANS director, as part of the GCAA's work plan for 2019, priority was placed on obtaining a digital automatic terminal information system, DATIS. Basically, the system is an automatic broadcast of weather information, of safety information for pilots. Currently, what obtains, we do the information manually. So every airplane that calls in, the controller will have to manually read out the weather information. What the system will do is automatically broadcast the information every minute or so, and then it updates every hour. Director Samru noted that the equipment will also allow for updates by the air traffic controller. The DATIS is expected to reduce the workload for air traffic controllers and pilots, timely presentation of accurate and updated information, and reduced likelihood of human error, basically a modernized system. The system will also allow it to align with International Civil Aviation Organization uh, global interoperability uh, plans because we want a seamless operation from where they're flying from North America to South America. The pilot's experience must be the same throughout whatever state airspace they overfly. So our investment in this project will align us with that. A standalone pressure and temperature device will also be brought on stream. This will be used whenever the data system is offline for maintenance purposes, while a new and improved GPS master clock system will replace the existing system to ensure that all the systems are synced. With this equipment, GCAA will be allowed to add more applications and devices to the system. 
Director Samaru noted too that the GPS system currently in use has been in place since 2009, therefore a new system is needed to keep abreast with updates to the software. Reporting for InfoHub, Natasha Smith. Youth mentorship, employment opportunities, and creating spaces for social cohesiveness in All Boys Stung and Charles Stung are most important for Councillor Heston Boswick, as he works in the best interest of residents. Here is our final report for today. On Councillor Heston Boswick's agenda for 2019 is the rehabilitation of the YMCA building in All Boys Stung, rehabilitation of the Independence Boulevard, and lighting for Constituency 10. Moving forward, Boswick wants to see his constituency build a night care center, the first of its kind supporting families, especially single parents who work the night shift. That is recognizing that most of our women are doing security work. And the care for who and how and where they leave their children. You know, so I would want to suggest that some interest and emphasis should be placed in establishing a night care center. In itself, it will create employment as well. Boswick is in support of the city mayor's call for persons to pay their rates and taxes. Before the end of my tenure as councillor, I will be happy to know, and I want to be ambiguous to say, I would be happy to know 75% of the non-payers of tax, pay their taxes in all by some charge. This, he says, will greatly assist in garnering finance for the upkeep of the city. Kippany Jordan, InfoHub. That's all for today. Connect with us on WhatsApp, Facebook, and YouTube. Much more news is on our website, dpi.gov.gy. And pop over to Instagram for the latest photo updates at DPI Guyana. Your bridge and weather reports are up next. Goodbye for now.